Welcome to Go Machining. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about dividing heads. Uh, we've got a couple of different projects coming up uh, with our clock project and also uh, making a tool for the shaper and it's going to involve some uh, dividing and using a dividing head uh, um, to make some, uh, some gears and things like that. So I have a fair number of them and uh, at the start, I'm just going to go through each one and show you guys each one and what their purpose is. Uh, talk about the difference between um, direct and indirect indexing and um, also get into a little bit more uh, uh, advanced indexing and uh, I've got, I have a rotary table that or a dividing head that can also uh, take the motion of the uh, crank on your milling machine so you can spiral mill and uh, do that kind of work as well and uh, as well as also doing uh, if you add a gear set to it you can do some uh, compound uh, dividing um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, coming up and I uh, hope you like this video. Thank you. All right, so here's the first of our indexers or uh, kind of dividing heads. This is a uh, hardage. Uh, it uses a 5C collet. Um, this is what you call a direct indexer, meaning that there's a plate inside here with a bunch of uh, uh, precision holes drilled in it and then every time you push this lever it allows it to index um, a certain degree and then uh, as you're moving along and this would be used for cutting uh, gear teeth or um, lantern pinions like we're going to be doing anything that you are dividing a circle into and uh, um, these uh, direct indexing is very useful because in in uh, if you have the right number that you need but uh, to do more complex and where you got to do more say more teeth on a gear you need to move to an indirect method which I'll show you um, I'll show you coming up in just a little bit um, but this is kind of a simple I've, I've heard it called different things some people have called them super spacers um, indexers um, all those kind of things so you put your collet in here and then your part would be hanging out and then you can just index index the spindle around just like this and then it pops into each division um, but again with with something with a direct index like this you're limited to uh, how many divisions you have on your uh, plate I believe this one We'll get it. I believe it's a like a 24 pin indexer. So this will do 24 holes around a circle or 24 notches or whatever you want, or anything you can divide into 24, say three or four, or whatever number you choose, or do a halfway. So that's a our first uh, direct indexer. Here's another indexer. This is uh, our first uh, direct. Um, or indirect, sorry, indirect uh, indexing uh, uh, indexer, indexing plate. Uh, this one I use as a uh, more like a uh, table instead of uh, sitting up like the other ones were. We looked at it would have been sitting like this, and you would have a chuck or something coming off this way, and you would have probably did your work going this direction. This one I use more as a table, and. Uh, the reason this is called a uh, indirect indexing is there's a gear box and a gear mechanism in here, a worm gear mixed with a uh, uh, another gear, and then it gives you a, uh, a a ratio. So every crank of the handle, this one and um, I've got some that are different than this, but this one is 72 to one, which means every crank of the handle gives you a 70 second. Uh, uh, increment of a circle uh, or to say it another way you would have to crank this handle 72 times in order to get one um, one complete revolution of the table um, these are a lot more useful these are more useful than a direct indexer in that you can do a lot more uh, you can do a lot finer indexes so maybe making a spline and a shaft or uh, some really small holes or uh, anything that you have to do very fine division work and it gives you a much more broad range of um, dividing 
Uh, this one I actually had bought and it was a rotary, what's called a rotary table. Um, and I used it as that for a while, but then I modified it to be used as a uh, um, indexer dividing head kind of a setup. So the way this works is you'd rotate this around and find the position you want and then drop your pin into the corresponding hole. And then I made up these different plates that go with this. And each one of these plates, just like the uh, direct indexing has different numbers. So this is uh, 15 holes. So there's 15 holes around here and that gives you a certain division. And then uh, this one is a uh, 10 hole. So that gives you another type of division. And then uh, we have one on here. Uh, I'm not sure which, what this is set up for right now, but um, you, there's a formula you use and, and I'll show you as we get closer to doing our lantern pinions for the clock how to calculate that and figure out using your uh, different plates that you have and also uh, and also the uh, uh, gear ratio that this is that this produces uh, to get you the divisions that you want. There's kind of a neat uh, um, simplifying fraction setup that you do to uh, uh, to make the divisions. I'm probably going to use this one to do the lantern pinions for the clock project that we're working on um, because like I said this is I use this mostly as a table so I'll end up putting this on a, a table making up a fixture to hold the uh, hold the lantern pinion uh, on here and then uh, it'll just be indexed around and we'll drill each each uh, hole for our uh, pinion wire that we're going to run through there. Um, this is probably one of the oldest uh, rotary table or uh, indexers that I've, I've had. Uh, it's worked very well. I've done quite a few projects with it. Here's our second indexer. I, I'm not sure what brand this is, but I believe it is a uh, quite a bit older than the first one that we looked at. Again, this is another form of a direct indexing, meaning that there's a notch on each one of these. As you can see on this plate, this is a 48 tooth, which means you can do 48 divisions. And again, anything that you can divide into 48. Um, as we move forward with making uh, some of the gears we're gonna be making for our clock and also um, some of the pinions, uh, you'll get to see how you do some of these calculations and figure out uh, how those work. But this is another form of uh, direct indexing. Um, this one I believe uses a uh, uh, can use a collet as well as a as well as a chuck. I made up a chuck that'll fit this, uh, so it's a pretty versatile tool. What I really like about this one is these plates aren't that hard to make. So if you did have to make up one or come up with a a different number, you could use a uh, indirect or a different style and actually cut out one of these, and uh, then you'd be able to have that division. Uh, those divisions so you could kind of create and make any divisions you divisions you want obviously you can't get too thin or your teeth would uh, kind of turn into being too small to uh, be practical or function but uh, this is just locked in with this this little uh, catch here and that's what holds it in place and then you just work your way around your circle and this one's nice too because you can set an angle so you could cut uh, angled profiles and things like that uh, to make different kinds of uh, different kinds of gears and uh, things along those lines or you can actually tip it completely up and then you could come at it from the top down and uh, do uh, um, do like our lantern pinions where we're going to have to do a drilling operation so uh, again just another way of dividing a uh, circle into uh, um, segments this is another indexer. Uh, this one's a little bit more precise and uh, as you can see it's not designed to be bolted down to say a milling table. I use this one for more uh, grinding operations. Say if you need to make a pin that you're grinding different flats on or, uh, um, or even grinding gear teeth into something where you're maybe making a gear that has hardened gear teeth and you need to use a surface grinder. Um, this is another form of indexer. Uh, you can also use it as a, um, as a spin fixture. 
So you could mount this on your surface grinder and then just pull this pin out and then it'll just sit and rotate. So then you can rotate your part and actually grind down a diameter on a uh, surface grinder. Um, and then again, you can index any division you want as long as it's within uh, whatever the range is. It's uh, uh, let's see. So I think it's like seven and a half degrees at each point. So uh, you can divide your circle up into into that many parts, and uh, that's how uh, that's how this uh, indexer works. Um, Again, this is a little more precise, and uh, you, I use it more on the surface grinder than a milling machine. Um, but, uh, yeah, just another form of a direct indexer. This one uses 5C collets, as well as the uh, Hardage one that we saw. You just pull it out like this, and then find your, uh, find your mark. Sometimes it can be a little bit uh, tricky. Find your key, put it in there like that, and then rotate this on the back and it draws everything together. Tighten it up, lock your part in, loosen it, and pull this out and spin to whatever division you're looking for. Just another form of a direct indexer. This is our second uh, indirect indexer. Um, as you can see, this one is uh, set up. These indexers are very similar to uh, a lathe in that how things are rotated. You can use a chuck or collet, um, or in this case with this one, you'd actually turn between centers. Um, this would be like your tail stock in your lathe. This would be like your head stock. And then uh, you turn, uh, turn your screw here to adjust your, uh, to turn um, turn your part around um, or whatever you were doing um, this one uh, this one is very similar to our other one um, it uses different plates with different numbers as you can see this one's got 49 47 all these different hole patterns you can do to get different uh, indexes make different gears and things like that um, Here's another plate. This one actually has three plates uh, that go along with this set. So you can do just about any any kind of division you would like or divide a circle up into just about anything that you would like. And the ratio on this one is uh, 40 to one. Uh, and this one also has, uh, similar to uh, our other one in the direct index, is that this head will rotate so you could put a chuck on it and cut different angles, maybe make a uh, uh, miter gear or something like that um, very useful uh, very useful little tool uh, right here this has all the plates removed right now because it's currently being ready to be set up for something so I have all the components that go along with it and uh, here's your sector arm and here is your uh, bar that you would rotate around just like the other one so um, Depending on what what uh, you're going to need, you would select your plate and then put this assembly back together. Pretty easy. Three screws. Um, put your sector arm back on. Just a little spring clip, and uh, and then this would go on over the top, um, just like this. And then this would spin and rotate, and that's what would. Get you your different divisions and then this uh, pulls out and locks out I believe. maybe not um, some of them do but this you just pull out and then spin to your next position lock this little uh, catch into each one of these these holes and uh, that's how this indexer works um, this is a little more modern and more uh, more of what you'd probably see. This is uh, um, this isn't a full universal. This is I think they call them like a half universal, and a half universal means that you are able to adjust the um, you're able to adjust this angle. Um, 
the other one that we had, uh, which is just a uh, dividing head, would be um, um, that one you can adjust the angle on it. It has to stay as it is, so you can either do it uh, as a table or put it on its side. Um, but this one, you can create any angle that you want along there up to uh, 90 degrees. So that's how you adjust that along here. Here's all this. Uh, this is pretty nice tape. This is a pretty nice indexer, and it's uh, um, it uh, nice size for the kind of equipment I have. So you set that, like I said, between centers, and then here's your tail stock, which would be similar to what you would have in a lathe. And then as you turn this, it moves in and out, and you'd go in between. So you might be able to use, say. Uh, um, a tapered mandrel or something in between these like you were turning between centers on a lathe um, so that's uh, that's another uh, form of indirect uh, indexing uh, so this is another uh, dividing head very similar to the one that we just looked at um, this is a um, um, indirect indexer just like we saw um, it does do uh, um, half divi or half dividing head or it's a half dividing head um, um, similar to that other one but it, it's out <laughs> I'm gonna start over with that so okay. I'm just telling start. you I'm starting yeah okay yeah, no, no. starting over okay uh, this is our next dividing head this is a uh, full universal dividing head um, meaning that the head can not only pivot just like the previous one that we saw uh, and you can do a bunch of degrees, it's hard to see because it's kind of dirty and rusty. Uh, I've been, I'm gonna work on kind of cleaning this one up eventually. This goes in the mill out in the, uh, um, out in the garage. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have it sprayed. I cleaned it up and got it pretty nice and then uh, uh, I didn't spray it and it flash rusted in about a day. So, uh, so there's a little lesson for you. Just uh, make sure that if you put anything out where there's going to be any kind of humidity a garage or anything make sure that you uh, spray them right away because like i said this happened in about a day so uh but uh this dividing head is like i said very similar to the previous one we looked at just a lot bigger and uh what makes this different though is it's a full universal meaning that it has this outboard shaft on here um which can be used for a couple of different things uh one is that you can uh connect this up with the crank handle or your your handle your uh, milling machine and then as you rotate this or turn it it'll uh depending on the gear ratio that you have in there let me just uh, set this push that aside as this turns and rotates lock this in as well so I haven't used this in a while but as this turns and rotates your shaft out here turns as well so this allows you to do a helical milling spiral milling in a uh, on a milling machine so if you want to do a say thread milling or uh, cut a long spiral in a uh, in a shaft or something you could set this up between centers hook this up with a gearbox and put the right uh, ratio in here which I have a, a set of gears uh, I think that'll fit this or close to it and then uh, you have to make up a plate for it but you can make up a plate mount that on your milling machine and then as you crank the handle of your milling machine this would rotate at the same time so as you're feeding in this way this would rotate at the same time and you could produce basically a spiral a spiral cut across the top of your part up here um, and this one again is set up just like the other one to cut between centers. I have the tail stock down there uh, But it's uh, hard to get both in the shot because this is like I said quite a bit bigger the other thing that you can do with this Kind of a setup that's neat is you can do uh, I believe I believe it's called compound indexing where 
And, and the reason you do a compound index is so that if you can, you need to hit really, really odd divisions or very, very fine divisions to where you uh, couldn't hit it on a plate that you have, you could set up a gearbox back here and then it would actually run into your shaft here. And then as you rotated this, your indexer would turn forward or back or whatever direction that it is. So then your points would become closer together or you would be able to uh, hit very, very fine indexing. So uh, if you, there's some interesting stuff out there. I don't know if I've, um, I've got a book that uh, from uh, Ford that uh, shows some, some examples of uh, compound indexing. Um, and it's really kind of neat to see how you can take these full universal uh, um, dividing heads and do a lot of different things with them like spiral milling and also compound indexing. Uh, very Not really used very much. Um, you don't need to do that kind of thing or there, it's just not that, uh, that useful or used that much. And uh, with the uh, uh, with CNC coming out and using um, um, that kind of stuff this this is really fallen to the wayside and they don't do a lot of this stuff but this is how they would have done it before uh, pre CNC and, and pre uh, uh, electronic dividing heads and things like that so this is just another form of an indexer this is uh, the most complex one I have that to do the most uh, most stuff and it's real interesting to see how uh, how all this stuff relates and how everything uh, works together and how they they used to do this this kind of work so on the next indexer we have here or dividing head uh, we get into something a little more mod modern this is actually a motorized one and goes with the uh, little CNC mill that I have um, this one, uh, it's pretty much the same as all the ones that we've seen in uh, the indirect uh, indexing, except instead of having a uh, um, instead of having a uh, dividing plate and uh, um, sector sector arms and uh, a crank like you've seen, and going through the different uh, holes in uh, in that way, it uses a stepper motor. So the stepper motor divides everything up into, um, I can't remember what the resolution is of this uh, stepper motor, but uh, divides it up into fine increments in the same way. What's nice about this is you don't have to do a lot of setup with it. And like I said, this is a much more modern method of how they would have, uh, how they do it with CNC's now. This is, uh, you'd set this up and then it could rotate. Um, the other way that they've called this is maybe a fourth axis on a, CNC machine um, This one you could I have a attachment so you could set it up this way as well And then run between centers or put a chuck on it and do rotational work as well as uh, uh, As well as doing holes and things like that and sitting this way um, Kind of a useful tool that uh, works really well with the uh, CNC. It's neat to be able to uh, do uh, multi-axis in that way but this is just another form of a indexer just more modern and using uh, electronics they uh, uh, you could also use this say uh, if you need to work all the way around a part I thought about maybe even one day trying to make a chess piece with this or something like that maybe the uh, knight or something where you wouldn't be able to do straight turning like on a lathe you could uh, put this on and then do your milling and do a full uh, full 3D profile uh, around a part and make a uh, chess piece or do some uh, really complex maybe pillars for a cot for a clock or something like that so um, but again just another form a more modern form of a uh, dividing head or indexer um, but it works the exact same way as the same principles uh, as all the other ones that we've seen you just have a motor that controls uh, your rotation instead of a uh, instead of you or uh, doing it manually um, I don't use this a whole lot uh, I've kind of set it aside and maybe use it more as a uh, um, as a fourth axis for the milling machine uh, I think it is pretty accurate but I don't know that it's as accurate as some of the other uh, dividing heads that I have um, I think that they are made just a, they might be made just a little bit better and uh, um, having the being able to do it by hand and feel by hand 
you get a little bit better idea of where things are. Plus on those, the uh, head will lock. On this one, it doesn't, so you can see. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's just a hair of play in it. So uh, if that shifts a little bit or moves, you might not get uh, quite a perfect index. But uh, for doing um, fourth axis work, this is really nice and be able to do do some stuff like that. And uh, the uh, cam software that I use now, I think they just came out with a fourth axis. So I might be able to start doing some uh, um, fourth axis work on the mill, which will be kind of kind of a fun thing to do so yeah you can also buy the other thing that can go with along with these is uh there's a little electronic um um keypads and you can just punch in the amount of divisions you want and then push start and it'll index to any division you want so then you don't have to worry about if you have the right um the right uh, division plate or um just much much of it takes a lot of the setup out of it basically so you could have a little keypad you plug this into and then have this divide around and divide your circle into uh, whatever division that you want to do your mill work or grinding work or whatever you feel like doing so this is a little bit different but this is a uh, um, actually a much larger uh, uh, method of dividing or a dividing uh, head this is a uh, rotary table um, that's why I didn't pick it up because it's kind of a kind of a bear to move but um, this goes up on the uh, milling machine and then you can cut different arcs but you can also use these for uh, making dividing plates or doing divisions um, just like we had with uh, the previous ones that I showed you um, uh, you have a wheel here that you turn and it rotates your table and then all your different divisions and this one actually has uh, fractions of a degree um, but you can use this also as um, dividing a, a circle into uh, segments um, it's uh, the reason that you would use a dividing head though or the one like we've uh, ones like the ones I've shown you is uh, this is a little more complicated in that you have to divide your circle then and then figure out how many degrees you need to go past each increment and then keep track of all that so the dividing head ends up uh, with sector arms and uh, dividing plates keeps track of all that for you so that you don't have to uh, try to think about uh, how many more degrees you have to go or what you have to do um, so this is a rotary table usually used for making arcs and stuff like that on a milling machine but again, you can use this as a form of dividing. Um, here's something else that's kind of cool is, um, I found uh, as far as moving heavy things around or storing things, as you can see, quite a few of the dividing heads are on here, but I just take uh, furniture dollies and put uh, flat boards on them. And then uh, you're able to roll them around and I can just roll these right under this, uh, this workbench here and uh, it's a good way to store things. So a little tip if you guys haven't used that, it's a kind of a nice method if you've got a little floor space and can push things uh, pretty easily under a, under a workbench or table or something. So. So the reason I, here's the reason why I really started this whole video. This is a, a uh, new dividing head that I picked up and I got it because uh, it uses the same collets as the Van Norman milling machine and it actually fits uh, right with it. So um, at the end part of this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to take this apart and kind of my method of taking things apart. This is kind of a simple, um, very simple rotary table or not a very simple uh, dividing head. Um, there's not a lot of parts to it and you can kind of get an idea how one of these things works. Um, this one's neat too in that uh, it's actually set up to be a indirect and direct indexer. So you can uh, disconnect this and push your worm gear under here. Out of the way, this worm gear is what rotates your, uh, rotates or indexes your uh, spindle. So as you can see, as that turns, but you can loosen this, push this out of the way, and then this will turn freely. And you can use this as a uh, 
direct indexing as well. So not only is it a indirect, but it's a direct indexer and you can set the angle uh, this way. I don't know if you would call that a half universal or not because you're indexing in a little, or your angle is produced in a little different way, but it does have a angle uh, plate on the bottom. So you're able to uh, adjust uh, what angle you're coming at this with. But again, this fits that uh, Van Norman milling machine that I have very nicely and that it uses the same collets and uh, it's just about the right size for it and it's made by Van Norman. So I'll be uh, taking this apart with you and uh, kind of get an idea of how to lay things out, how to keep track of things um, and stuff like that and just see how these uh, uh, dividing heads work. Um, there's not a whole lot to them, uh, especially this one. It's basically just a gear with a uh, uh, with a worm gear and uh, some type of spindle. There's probably tapered bearings or something in here, probably plain bearings. And then, uh, unfortunately, with this, it's missing the uh, um, the pin for doing uh, direct indexing. So I'll probably uh, in the future, near future, make a new pin for this. It shouldn't be that hard to do uh, and see how that works. And so then this can be used for both again and then get set up over on the uh, set up over on the uh, Van Norman milling machine. Um, there's a few things. This thing seems like it's in really good shape. Everything moves smoothly. It's missing an oil uh, cup or cap here. Um, this looks like these threads got a little bit beat up and damaged. I'm not too concerned about that again because I'll probably I was more after it for the fact that this uh, this uh, taper spindle taper is a uh, fits that milling machine. So the same collets that go in this also go in the spindle for the milling machine. So that makes it nice to be able to change that have that interchangeable so you don't have to buy two collet sets to uh, run one machine um, so this is a Van Norman uh, dividing head again the pretty much the same as all the others that we've seen uh, you got sector arms and your uh, your plate index plate and then your uh, uh, your rotation with your handle here um, I think with a little cleanup, this will be a nice little, uh, nice little addition. Thanks for uh, exploring some dividing heads with me and looking over these. Um, as you can see, we kind of went through and took this one apart. Uh, I went through and cleaned this one up, and uh, there's a few things. Uh, most of these are come apart about the same way. This one's a pretty simple one, which is why I wanted to select it for this video and show because um, you really get an idea of how uh, how these things interact and work. Um, here's your gear set to produce your 40 to 1 ratio or 60 to 1 ratio, whatever you're looking for. A little worm gear set and that's for your indirect indexing. Um, as I was going through and uh, cleaning this stuff up, it's kind of neat some of the stuff you discover um, with how these things work. I noticed that in this, uh, this hole here where they uh, um, turn, you probably turn this between centers and ground it. They drilled straight through and that actually connects with this oil groove here. So I know now that once this is put together and uh, uh, put into its, uh, into its uh, bushing like this, uh, you squirt some oil in here and then it'll oil all down inside here and inside the works. Uh, and then it'll probably work its way down even into some of these uh, um, into this uh, gear down here too. Um, uh, so that's kind of a neat thing. Uh, sometimes you discover some uh, some neat ways people th thought about doing things and how to add lubrication to these. The other thing that you'll see too is this would be like a, a plain bearing spindle. Uh, no ball bearings, but you can see it's a cone. Uh, it has a taper to it. So then as this whole thing fits together really nice uh, it eliminates all your wobble and slop and then as you tighten this up more um, you can kind of adjust that wear as this uh, as this dividing head wears in you can tighten uh, this nut on the back uh, and uh, so you can get take that play out um, a lot of older lathes operate on kind of the same principle and uh, that uh, hardage uh, 
uh, Harding divided head uh, that I showed you has a similar similar setup as this. There's a tapered cone inside of it, uh, no ball bearings. So uh, yeah, kind of some neat things, all your different uh, uh, components, but if you keep track of what you're doing and kind of pay attention, uh, they really come apart pretty easy. Um, and there's a lot of common sense that went into these, uh, these old uh, tools and machines. So um, generally if something doesn't make sense, then it probably is in the wrong spot or is you're putting something together wrong. So um, here's all your different pieces and uh, all cleaned up and I'm excited to put this on the mill and see how it works. Thank you.